I know for a lot of developers using GitHub Copilot, it's sort of like the tool that I will never let go of. Uh, earlier today, Microsoft announced the availability of Copilot extensions. Uh, this is a new feature they announced at Build. Uh, Build is a Microsoft conference occurring now in Seattle. This was kind of a cool announcement. Um, basically, the ability to extend the capabilities of GitHub Copilot uh, through extensions. I've got Matt Casperson here. He's a principal solutions engineer at Octopus, a colleague of mine. And Matt uh, was one of the developers or the developer who built out the extension that was um, available through Octopus Deploy. Welcome, Matt. Hi, thank you. Yeah, it's exciting times and uh, a good opportunity to, uh, to talk about this extension now that the world knows. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of new extensions from various partners of Microsoft. So we can see in here, you've got Docker, You've got other folks like Launch Starkly. And then there's this little icon that could, the Octopus Deploy icon. So we were up on stage, which is awesome, uh, virtually, of course, as an icon during the keynote address of Microsoft Build. And uh, this is a blog post from GitHub that talks a little bit about how Copilot extensions work in action. And so the idea here is that with GitHub Copilot, you have this sort of AI capability built into tools like, for example, uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, you can download the extension for Copilot, install it, and then start asking questions of Copilot uh, and then target that to different extensions, for example, like Octopus Deploy. And so there's a video embedded here, but I wanted to invite Matt here to talk a little bit about the extension we built. Um, we talked a little bit about it on a press release here, uh, which you can read yourself if you'd like. There are a bunch of examples that we'll go through in this video here that Matt's going to show off. If you're at all interested, you can check us out up on the Marketplace, which is now available. So this is under Octopus for GitHub Copilot, and you'll find this available up in the Marketplace as well, amongst with all the other things that are there. So uh, there we are listed at the top. And then finally, if you want, you can check out the docs, which we have extensively. But anyways, um, I'd like to um, query Matt with a bunch of questions. You are you will be my co-pilot in this interview, <laughs> talking about all the things that have been built into the extension. So Matt, what is the Octopus extension for GitHub Copilot? Yeah, so uh, really at the end of the day, it's uh, an interface that developers can use to query their Octopus instance from the tools where they write their code. So uh, Visual Studio Code is a prime example here where developers already have Copilot off to the side, you know, answering those questions like, uh, how do I scrape a HTML page? Or, you know, what's the regex syntax for a phone number or something like that. And within that same chat window, you can now actually query your Octopus instance to uh, you know, uh, consume things like the, the state of deployments, any interesting items that may appear in your deployment logs. You can actually query our docs and, and search them with up-to-date information about the latest state and the latest features available in Octopus. And uh, you can also do things like generate custom reports. So the, uh, the, the agent that we have is built on the same technology that uh, ChatGPT uses. And the benefit of that is you get to really just converse with your Octopus instance and ask it to present certain information uh, in certain ways. Quite often you'll format things in uh, you know, using specific markdown syntax, code blocks and tables and, and things like this. And you really just get to ask the, uh, the, the, the chat interface to give you the information that you need without having to jump between a whole bunch of different tools. And uh, quite often really without having to have a, a deep understanding of Octopus itself, so this is also a nice feature for those, you know, engineering managers who uh, overlook teams that have dozens, if not hundreds of tools, and they just need to get information quickly without necessarily understanding the, the, the domain knowledge or the domain um, uh, model of something like Octopus. They can just type a plain query uh, text prompt into the chat and, uh, and get the answers that they're looking for. So uh, yeah, keep people in the flow, uh, stop having to jump around tools so much and really just get the information that you want with uh, with questions that um, are really just uh, plain natural English. Awesome, let's have a look. Uh, so I brought up the screen that you've got. This is uh, the instance you're utilizing. So you've got GPT, sorry, GPT. You've got GitHub Copilot uh, with the extension installed and you've got it um, communicating with a instance that has this enabled. Yeah, so uh, what happens now is that when you uh, chat in the window, you'll actually be chatting essentially to uh, one of these um, extensions that are now exposed as part of this announcement that, that GitHub made. And this is our extension here, the Octopus AI app. And so what's going to happen here is that I have uh, configured this in the background. I've already logged into my Octopus instance and uh, supplied the credentials that are required. And at this point, I can now chat with 
my octopus instance basically through the same interface that I would, uh, you know, query the, uh, the, the copilot chat. And so you can do really basic things like, uh, showing up a, a table based representation of a dashboard. Uh, and so this is actually the, the space that we use to deploy the, uh, the, the extensions themselves. And uh, you can get a sense of what it looks like in the, um, uh, you know, a, a table based representation of this dashboard. But one thing to notice is uh, this is not this is not a chatbot in the sense that chatbots have very restricted limp, uh, syntax. You have to type commands in in a very specific way. Uh, this is just plain English, so uh, I, I can say "show me the dashboard." I can say "please show me the dashboard." I can quite often well mistype dashboard there, and I think it's going to pull that up. So you can see that it's quite. Uh, quite flexible in how it uh, interprets some of these commands. And you don't have to have a, uh, you know, a knowledge of a very limited, very specific kind of syntax that uh, you know, previous chatbots or chat uh, interfaces often imposed on, uh, on their users. The other thing you can do, obviously, if you want to get started, uh, you just need to get some help. And so if you just want to say hi to the, uh, to the chatbot, uh, sorry, to the, to the extension, you get a list of uh, of sample queries that you can run, and this is tailored to your Octopus instance. So these are uh, these space names and project names actually come from the Octopus instance that you're connected to. Oh, I see. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, you'll definitely see uh, some different uh, some different text here based on uh, the configuration of your settings. But what we can see here is uh, I can actually now specify the space that I want to show the uh, the dashboard of. And so before I was seeing the deployments of the space where we deployed the Octopus extension, but uh, now I'm looking at uh, the, the demo space here, which is slightly different. It just has this one sample web app. And uh, this is an example of how you can converse with the agent and give it uh, details like what the name of the space is and, uh, and really just pass that through in a, in a natural kind of format. I'm going to just copy and paste some of these examples here. And so uh, the thing I want to do is uh, grab the URLs from the deployment And so, uh, yeah, deployment logs often have just thousands of lines of verbose output. It's not very useful. No one wants to read it. Perhaps useful if you need to debug, but most of the time you just want to extract things like the URL of the app that you just deployed. And so here we can see that the uh, the, the extension here has uh, scanned those deployment logs and found the uh, you know uh, a URL that was printed as part of that um, part of that deployment. We can also do things like scan for security vulnerabilities. So as part of this deployment, what we have is a step that's going to scan the, uh, the dependencies in our app and um, uh, potentially find any of those, uh, any uh, vulnerabilities that may have been found uh, during that deployment process. So actually just change the wording of this. And let's do security vulnerabilities. Uh, that's totally misspelt, but I don't think that's going to matter. <laughs> uh, again, it's uh, it's it's fairly forgiving in terms of the um, you know the kind of input that you can provide to these queries. Now, is it also contextual, like ChatGPT, meaning um, it will remember previous commands, etc., and so it has a running context? Yeah, so we haven't implemented that feature. The contextual bit of those chatbots is. Uh, all that's happening in the background is is literally the, the 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 your prompt and the response is just being built up and reset with every query. Yeah, the chat GPT is actually stateless; it has no memory as such. It's the the contextual part of it is is all part of the front end. We we didn't enable that uh, just because actually we we need to fill up that context window with the configuration of your Octopus instance. So I didn't leave. Uh, much space left over to, to kind of uh, remember the history of, of the chat. So the other thing you can actually do with uh, this interface is query our docs. And so the reason why this is important is because our docs update quite frequently. But the thing with AI agents or uh, uh, LLMs is that they're quite often out of date. They only know the information that they have at the time that they were trained. And that information might be months or years out of date. And so an example here is that uh, I've uh, asked our agent, how do I enable server-side apply, which is a feature of Kubernetes that has only been added very recently to Octopus. 
as we can see, it's correctly identified that it's a feature that it, you can now have enabled by default. Uh, but if you want to turn it off, that's, that's also an option. But if I went ahead and queried the actual regular uh, chat GPT interface, it's going to give me some something about it's not a feature of Octopus. It's not really something that you, that you use with Octopus. And uh, you know it'll give you a, a command you can use to manually run it. And so you can see how you get much better information uh, when you query our, um, our agent directly, as opposed to relying on uh, just a general um, you know, a chat uh, service like uh, the one provided by Copilot. So the last thing that I think is uh, interesting is uh, you really get to have, well, you really have the ability to instruct uh, the extension to build up some interesting results. And so what we have here is an instruction to build up basically a custom report where I want to see the uh, the output of uh, particular deployments with uh, these little icons here. And uh, we want that all in a markdown table. We want these uh, values here, release version, the release notes, and the status. And uh, we want to grab the last five deployments. And so behind the scenes, there's nothing in the code or there's nothing in the agent that specifically that, that is set up to specifically understand these commands, right? I haven't written any code here that, that understands that uh, success and a green icon here is significant. This is all being interpreted and understood by the agent itself without any you know, uh, hard coding or any uh, you know, tricks, up, tricks up our sleeve. And we can see it's, uh, it's done a pretty good job, right? It's built up a table, it's got the release versions, the release notes, and, uh, and we have the icons. So there's, um, there's a lot of flexibility and I think a lot of potential here really for those teams that need to use or uh, need to access the data that's contained in an Octopus instance. That's awesome. Um, a, couple, a few questions, actually. Now, this is read-only. We're not invoking commands that will impact your it running instance. Is that correct? That's correct. So the, the first instance or the first version of this tool is definitely read-only. So we are, uh, the agent actually sits outside of the Octopus API, and it makes calls back into your Octopus instance. Now, understanding this is just an experiment, uh, but who can use this today? Is it cloud customers, server? both who, who could use this uh, from the yeah. customer base? So we've set this up uh, to allow cloud customers to access it. Uh, and the reason for that is we, we needed a public API and we needed a, uh, a known Octopus version to work against. Fantastic. And just to remind folks, if you want to see it, um, you can go to the GitHub Marketplace, which is at github.com slash marketplace. You'll see us listed there. You click on that link there. And you'll see the explainer, um, you'll see the instructions, and you'll see some example prompts similar to the demo that Matt just provided. Uh, so that's available for you there. And uh, in addition to that, if you're at all interested, you could also read the docs, which are also available. So um, this is at octopus.com slash docs. Uh, search for Octopus Extension for GitHub Copilot, and it will go through the um, requirements, etc. So uh, what's required is a cloud instance, an API key, and obviously, as you mentioned, uh, a account on GitHub Copilot. Well, it's looking awesome, Matt. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, go ahead and kick the tires. Check it out for yourself.